call the meeting of the. Under right here. I'm going to call the meeting at the uh, Norfolk County Advisory Board Finance Committee meeting to, to, uh, uh, to start. Um, uh, we need to do our roll call of um, Eric Beckerman. Yes. Are you, are you we need to call and Elizabeth Childs is here. Joe hey, no, is here. We have a quorum. Sorry. The first item on our agenda is the FY23 second budget adjustment. Speak up. Is the FY23 second budget adjustment. And I think Dr. Conley, we're going to turn it over to you, correct? Sounds great. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, Thanks, committee members. Uh, the benefit of the uh, of your proceedings, I'm referring to the spreadsheet right now. Okay. We'll go through this expeditiously. If we get to the larger meeting, a lot of the Liz, do you want this one? No. I got it. We got it. We get to the larger meeting. Um, Go through a slide deck, it has the same content, but it's a little easier to see when you're talking to 20 people. Okay. So basically, I'll start with the uh, little picture that the, the county did FY22 with the surplus. Um, the total surplus from the five million thirty nine thousand cents. We uh, as you know appropriated six hundred thousand from the FY twenty three budget. So our real operating surplus is the top line, four million four hundred thirty nine thousand forty twenty five dollars and forty eight cents. Yep. Which you want to hear is a very similar script to what we went through in FY22, same approach. Very similar size uh, surplus. I'm proposing to move $1 million to our stabilization, $1 million to our capital fund, $1 million to forward fund our capital for FY24. And then um, we have a running surplus with the amount that we have to draw from this fiscal year, $1.239 million. Okay. The commissioners have elected at this point not to support the vote at contribution. They want to do it later in the fiscal year. They want to leave it as floating surplus rather than assigning it to the OPEP. And I was fine with that. It, it, it really makes no difference if you do it now or if you do it in April. So that's why it's highlighted. In red. Will that be the we have hundred thousand dollars in our budget as well. Okay. So it'll be a total of three hundred dollars in. Okay. But you could increase it. Well, I'm not, I'm not. Depending on how much surplus we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So now when we get to the uh, overall surplus, I'm just showing you how well the county's done the last couple of years. We've had surpluses that exceed $5 million. That's a far cry from what we were in FY20 when we had just over $2 million. Our current stabilization um, from last year sits at approximately 14.8% of our annual operating budget, which is not bad. And you may recall that the Abrahams Group made a recommendation the county should strive for a stabilization balance that's between uh, five percentage and up to twenty percent of its operating budget. I'm happy to inform you that if you would like to support the million dollar transfer into the stabilization this fiscal year, we will be at seventeen point eight five percent of our operating budget under stabilization, very close to our cap. Uh, in addition, okay, we have the whole place. in addition, this we have filmed by Kenzie Taylor. Okay. In the interest of good government, I guess. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, so moving on, I mentioned the capital spending is um, funding our FY23 and forward funding FY24. Into our supplemental needs, starting with information technology, it's on budget now. Uh, we're recommending a new hire. Now, many of you may recall that the Ripples Group report recommended certain hires uh, consistent with redundancy and the path ahead. Uh, leaning on that report, being advised by it, our, our technology staff and I have worked towards uh, recommending a new position of a network administrator. The annual salary would be $90,000 because we're funding it halfway through the year or so. A portion of it would be assigned to Registry D's excise fund. The other half, half would come from our supplemental. So you'll see on the first two lines, they're in green. Anything that's in green is coming from Registry D's excise. 
cockpit. Um, in addition, we're requesting uh, certain pieces of equipment exclusively for the registry. That includes two rebuild copiers, one plotter, one um, virtual host server. And um, with those items, the, um, the total cost of the registry would be, as I said, assigned in green. Um, at the very bottom, we're asking for $10,000 to customize the county intranet uh, web portal. I'm going to talk about that briefly. If you haven't been on our new website, please check it out. It's a big, big change from what it was. I want to give Bill Buckley all the credit in the world. Um, he worked with the vendor over the last year to bring it to what it is. And you're going to find it to be very, very easy to navigate. But there's a feature in our website that I really want to build out for the benefit of the employees. It's an intranet. Be accessible only by employees and it's where we're going to land all our policies all our procedures all our collective bargaining agreements all our handbook um, provisions and other information that is approved by the commissioners and for use by the employees uh, it'll, be, it'll be an excellent tool for document management and for people to understand in any given moment what the current proposals are um, but we'll need some additional funding to support the customization build out of that platform the walls the golf course um, we're asking for $75,000 to offset um, the improvements that I think you'll hear Chairman Shea talk about shortly. Um, the total cost of the project is $175,000. You folks have already approved the $100,000 last fiscal year. That seventy five dollars is going to be offset by an earmark that Representative Bruce Ayers got into the uh, FY22 end of year budget. So we expect that money back from the state, but that might happen later fiscal year 23, as you know, those things sometimes take yeah. time. Um, but we'll need this money to close out our obligation. You'll hear from Chairman Shea later about the playground. It's um, it's going to be under construction and completed probably within a month. Um, so this helps us make uh, make full on our obligation. We'll see the money back. Uh, in addition, um, we have a Granite Street core sign that needs $4,600 for installation completion as well as some um, hardware and plumbing supplies that were uh, utilized as a result of a major irrigation line failure back in July, $10,000. The Registry of Deeds, um, earlier today, the commissioners voted to support $20,000 in legal services for the Registry of Deeds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I call that out in that purple box to show the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, folks assembly of the Finance Committee. It was a two to one vote. Um, the original request was $60,000. In addition, the register had asked for $32,000 um, to support consulting services. Um, that contract was a three year contract funded August 1st, 2021. Um, it ended obviously financially June 30th and it was supposed to renew on July 1st, but without funding, the contract was rendered null and subsequently it's not in effect. If the, if the board or the advisory board were to enact it, it would still be considered inactive because of the wording in the contract. It has to go back out to bid effect. Right. Commissioners talked Yes, Go ahead. Ask a quick question about that. Of course. You said it's a three year contract started in 21. Wouldn't that bring it to 24? So the language would, Norman. The language in that particular account. One second. Just read it to you. It's interesting language. I'm guessing it yeah. <laughs> Huh? I'm guessing it would be. So I'll read the language. Um, this is under the multi year contract section C. A multi-year contract shall be canceled by the Register of Deeds in the Newport County Commissioners after the first fiscal year if funds are not made available in the Norfolk County annual budget for continuance of this contract. Would you like to see the language? Or? I get it. Good That's fine. Right. Thank you. So the Commission has interpreted that to say, well, it wasn't funded and the contract has ended. So they desire to revisit the matter later in the year uh, to possibly include uh, or uh, fund um, consulting services on behalf of the county commissioners. So more on that later. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on, the Norfolk County Agricultural High School. Thank you. Let me go back to the registry of deeds on the uh, legal services. Sure. You are proposing, why do you have 60 in here? If they vote? That's the old version. That's all the old version. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, we have one here, Paul, that is reflective of what was voted on today. Oh, okay. Thank you. Nice. That key. That's hot off the press. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. I have yeah. the old one too. He had the old one also. There you okay. go. Hey, Eric. Thank you. If it's double sided. Okay. 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 Thank you. You good, Paul? Yep. All right. The, All right. Uh, go ahead. That's a recommendation for tonight. Mm -hmm. we will, we'll have to include that in our supplemental, correct? Mm -hmm. 20,000. If, if we're, we're so inclined to, to do so. Correct. <laughs> 
the uh, North County Agricultural High School is looking for $100,000 to conduct a feasibility study for a new cafeteria. Um, facility of the high school, um, which the kids eat, is, I believe, um, looked it up on the assessor's website, I believe it was built in 1970. It's approximately 40,000 square feet. It's beyond useful life. It has a lot of building structural issues. Um, and what the school's desire is a complete understanding of what the building is currently. Can it be renovated? And if so, what the cost and the design may look like? And if so, um, if it's not rec reclaimable, it needs to be reconstructed. With the, cost. Uh, the path ahead, obviously, is going to be defined by how much it costs to do any of the above. But the schools feel compelled at this point to study this building because it is in such tough shape. And it's a major focal point and a need, space need of the schools going forward. <coughs> So that, that is their only ask in the summer. And that, that value, by the way, is a, is a tick on the higher end from my experience. Um, I've compared the feasibility studies to other 40,000 square foot buildings. Um, we may see um, bid results that are below $100,000, but this is the upper end of expectation. Um, regarding the advisory board, as you may know, the advisory board is seeking $20,000 to defend itself against the lawsuit brought by the Register of Deeds. <clears throat> Excuse me, pre your executive board meeting on September. So, Paul, that was FD executive. Um, moving on to maintenance, um, I'll go through these relatively quickly. Um, the 614 High Street, the commissioner's office and the treasurer's office is looking for a bathroom renovation. This is a higher cost, you'll note, mm -hmm. to renovate or gut um, these, these restrooms. Um, we're going to feature touchless features, and I expect mm, approximately 25000 out of the 125 to be used. Uh, ARPA that'll come later but that was a bid cost uh, we had difficulty finding people to do the work um, so I think the price reflects the market uh, Quincy District Court needs free on work on cooling systems the Brookline District Court needs new gutters and downspouts if you're familiar with that building it's it's a got to be you are correct, you are correct. <laughs> and thus the price How did you get uh, the price <laughs> the gutters and downspouts <laughs> around that old building uh, hundred sixty three thousand dollars Stoughton District Court needs exterior lighting improvements, um, the registry boiler repair. This is a cost overrun from last year. Old River Place, this is the area behind District Court. Um, the county um, has um, a building, uh, facilities uses. It's a, it's a, it looks like a colonial building. Um, but we're looking to um, pay for the windows and the painting of that new facility. The windows will be installed by maintenance staff. Um, Superior Court, as you may know, is being ready for a rededication on. October 19th, 16th, 19th, 16th, 19th, 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 
years. So scale-wise, we're very close to where we were last year. It'll still leave just under half a million dollars for us to use uh, for the rest of the fiscal year. As you know, the December and eventually the May, the numbers tend to trend down as we get in further into the fiscal year and start using our capital resources. And so forth. Um, I just wanted to briefly talk about the OPEB liability. As you know, 57.05 billion was our liability in 2020. Um, we've made some progress, as you can see, between FY20, 21, 22, and what we proposed for FY23. Obviously, what we're doing is not making a major dent to the liability, but it is making what's called regular and recurring payments, and that's what our auditors want to see. They want to see that you have a commitment towards the liability, and that's sufficient for them at this time. Um, so observations ahead, just to up note, um, the debt of Superior Court uh, will be dedicated on October 16th to the former Bellon. Our county capital uh, ARPA plan includes uh, new boiler and heating systems in Rentham District Court. We're going to be um, exploring efficient and green alternatives through a roundtable discussion with the state uh, and their, their engineers. We'll be conducting that discussion. <coughs> We've completed approximately 33% of our financial services contract with the Abrahams Group. We still have some work remaining, which includes um, some FY24 budget prep for infinite visions, as well as the new internal control plan, which you may remember is a financial document of, of significance that is the missing link between policies that the Abrahams report gave us and how our financial team is supposed to conduct their work. So Mark is working on that right now. We should have that in the next week, month or two. Quincy District Court site appraisal is completed. Um, we're not at liberty to discuss the contents of that publicly, but uh, the county has engaged with Commonwealth for the next steps, and we're attempting to adhere to Mass General Law Chapter 30B, as well as 7, 7C, and Chapter 34, Section 1. And that's going to be our future chapter. Sure, sure as we're, things emerge. Yeah. We are in the Eventually. beginning dialogue stage. Yeah. We've also contracted with the Collins Group. Uh, I see Michelle Blavadini here tonight. Our Human Resources Director is delighted. Uh, not only do we have our higher on board, but we're also moving towards the employee handbook for an update of the same, the first update since 1987. The county has been in negotiations with three ASME units for a three-year contract. We're projecting a, an agreement this fall. Uh, we're pushing hard to get to the end game. We've been on, in negotiations for about six months, and we'll coordinate the financial impact with you and the advisory board uh, for hopefully um, an upcoming meeting. If it has to be a pop-up meeting, I'll ask. If it has to wait till December, it has to wait till December. It's our goal to let you know as soon as it's ready for your attention. Okay. Uh, the Wallace and Recreational Facility will have a new playground this fall. Um, I know later on Chairman Shea is going to ask to speak a little bit about the improvements the county's made towards this property. Uh, but we're delighted that with this new state earmark, we're going to see an immediate improvement right out front for the playground. Uh, that concludes my presentation and supplemental at this time. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, further questions, Eric. The other question I have is on the back page of this uh, supplemental, there is a note saying that we require a motion to amend the fiscal 23 registered deeds appropriation from 3.4 to 3.5. Do I need to make that motion? So um, you do. There are two votes that are before you tonight. That is one. And thank you for drawing attention to that. I just wanted to point out that when I met with the advisory board in the spring to propose the FY23 budget, we projected the spending of the registry of deeds based on um, actuals through February. And I told people that we would come back once the actuals were known. Well, now we know what the actuals are. And as a result, <clears throat> the register's appropriation needs to go up by $94,000 and some change. So your appropriation will help uh, identify what the new level is for appropriation. Uh, within this document, Eric, the commissioners have elected option two, which is to fund the uh, network administrative costs at half, as well as the equipment noted to total 94192 Okay. Right, so you're going to increase the appropriation through your motion, and, and then, then vote when you vote for the SUP, it will move those expenses into that cost, and that's yep. the registry budget. Okay. That also includes on that option, too, does that include the uh, $20,000? It does not. The 20000 will come strictly out of registry of deeds, excise fund. It's a supplement. 601, Paul. It's a 601 answer. That, that's how we're going to so but sounds, you, know, you have two motions to make. So it sounds like the first motion is actually the uh, registry yeah. to uh, increase the total. Yes. And then the second motion is to approve these supplemental uh, components. Yes. The supplemental budget. So okay. I don't have any further questions. All right. How about you, Paul? No, I'm questions? just, I'm just, if I'm the first one, the second one, I'm voting against the $20,000. Okay. 
Right, so we can. So that's going to be on the second one. When we get to that's the second motion, what is that? Okay. Can I um, ask just one question about the um, uh, the money that comes back to us from the state, like for the playground, for example, small dollars? But when that comes back in, does, does that automatically go back into the same line that we took this out of? Where does it come? How does the how does it flow? It'll come, Josie. Uh, Go right into general fund. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, so it's so the so we will show an expense out of that line item. We shouldn't have. To be but we will have so over our total. They'll be back at general fund. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. I think, I think are any other questions from finance committee? Eric, do you want the do you want to make the motion, Eric, on the I registry of deeds appropriation? Yeah, that would let, be me, let me start with that. Get the All right, we've so. got a we've got a. You want to? Want Bigger print or smaller print? Your choice. Oh, I can read it from here. Perfect. That's fine. All right. So I will make a motion to require to um, amend the fiscal twenty three registry of deeds appropriation from three million four hundred twenty one thousand eight sixty nine seventy five to three million five hundred sixteen thousand sixty two dollars and twenty six cents. Second, please. Second on that? Second. Okay. Can you hold Maybe the second? second? Yep. Make sure we're right. Give me one second, please. Yeah, sure. We're taking a little consultation break. I think we still have, we still, we have zero left. So we don't have to take that, we don't have to sort on that until after we do this. So we can actually have a conversation. But we're holding on this, this piece and then we're going to hold on for something else. Yeah, we're going to hold on for something else. So if you... And then, and then, and then, yes, we're checking uh, the FY22, excuse me, the FY23 original appropriation. The dollar amount, yeah, okay, all right. So the difference just, between what I have, yeah. we're just oh. double checking the dollar amount. When I have our decimals correct. Always. We want decimal culture. Yeah, exactly. The decimals have to be right. Finance committee feels like a little bit of a tissue. I can sit on the inside if you want. No, 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 it's fine. I think it's better for the recording. Oh, it's only for this view. It's better for the recording. That's true. What is what are the Eric, correct if I, numbers? If I could uh, yep. refer you to the um, original FY23 number for the registry I have shown on the page is 3421 869.75. Yep, I have That's that. the mandated figure. Okay. And it's going to go to 3516062. Okay. Point two six. Yep, that's okay, where I made the motion for. Yep, we had a that's, different number yeah. on our. Okay. 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 So we're good. All right, we were good. We made the correct motion. So the motion I made. And seconded. And seconded. So now we have to vote on that first motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. All right, that motion passes unanimously to approve the. Um, uh, to increase the registry of deed appropriation for FY23 from 3421-869-75 to 3516-062-26. Okay. All right. Now, the second motion is perhaps more complicated. On the page. The well, second motion. 
Yeah, so right. I'm going to so make... I could. How about... Hold on keep this second. relatively simple. Um, May I just ask one question before we start that supplemental? Because I think this question is going to come up later, too. Um, the request um, and the commissioners voted the 20000 for the registry for legal fees. Can someone remind me what was already in the budget for legal fees? $7,000. 7000 Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Very briefly, I've, I, I neglected to inform you that in addition to the supplemental items, there are two uh, transfers within um, okay. the budget. Okay, all right. Um, one is for $6,737 within, within the recreational facility. Yep. And also, uh, there's a $39,400 shift in the technology budget to uh, afford additional temp contract work. Okay. Uh, so those two items. Uh, overall, we have a number, and I believe it's the custom of the board, of boards to vote the overall one. Yeah. So if you'd like to write down what I have currently, if you approved everything the way it's been presented, yeah. your motion would be to approve two thousand uh, two million nine thirty eight eight thirty eight point three. Can we repeat that? Point three one. Yes, two nine three eight eight three eight point three one. Okay. Was a supplemental as presented. as presented. So if you decide to change anything, we'll just deduct from that, okay? Or add whatever you choose. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if that's straightforward to me, John, because I thought the budget request was for 77. Five right, we're also moving money uh, oh, here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Got it. Okay, we're, it's including all of that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Fine. Okay, fine. All right, all right so, that, so no, that does it. Okay. So I will make a motion to approve and supplement the fiscal 23 supplemental budget request as presented by the director. For the $2,938,000. For in the amount of $2,938,838.39. Okay. All right. Um, do we have a second for that motion? Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. Okay. We eliminate the registry of these legal service money of $20,000. Okay. Now we have an amendment on this Okay. We have a second for the amendment. So that would make it 9, 18. Okay. Yeah, 9, 18. Eight. 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 I'll, second, I'll second the amendment. So you'll second the amendment. Okay. So we're going to vote the amendment first, and then we'll vote the main motion. So, um, Just a, yes. I think that if we don't fund it, the possibility could drop as soon as we won't have to fund the other one later on. I don't, I'm not spending money to see me. can't see it. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen to anyone. It's bullying. Got to stop. Can I can ask the director's uh, opinion on this only because we've got two lines right here for 20000 I think if we're going to make that money, we should probably be able to do all of them at this point. You're on. Your finance committee makes a recommendation to the advisory board. Prior to the advisory board having a discussion like this, you'll be hearing from uh, general counsel, like from counsel Scott Lopez, in executive session. Um, so your your vote today is advisory, right? Binding vote will come later with the advisory board. And I would defer that kind of conversation, Eric, to that bigger board. Um, I think if we're looking at the financial lens, well, the way you think it should be voted, um, and it can be a, a Addressed later on uh, by the advisory board after you get the council on the pros and cons. Yeah. I might I might also point out that we will go into executive session with Scott Lopez prior to voting the supplemental budget. So yeah. from a from agenda perspective, we'll have the opportunity to have that conversation before we actually have to vote this. So we could make a recommendation from our finance committee. That is one thing, and we'll present why we thought that, and then. There may be discussion after the executive session that suggests we even change it. So, all right. So we have a motion to amend. Second. We have an amendment to right. strike to twenty thousand dollars that goes to the industry for the police. Okay. Um, I think we should vote that amendment. Do you have a second? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Eric, second. Eric, second. Eric, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor of striking the twenty thousand. Aye. 
I will go along with that. So it's a unanimous vote to strike the twenty thousand. Yes. So I will amend my original motion okay. to approve or to recommend to the full advisory board the fiscal twenty three supplemental budget request for a total of two million nine hundred and eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty eight dollars and thirty one cents. I'll second. Okay. All right. All right. We'll vote the main motion. Um, all those in favor of that main motion? Aye. It's a unanimous vote. Okay. So the Finance Committee recommendation that we're going to report out, that I'm going to report out at the whole advisory board meeting, is that the Finance Committee recommends the FY23 self budget request minus the two put out the 20000 up for the registry. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Um, meeting minutes? Well, we have meeting minutes. minutes. Yes. We have our meeting minutes. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of Wednesday, August 17th, which was the Finance Committee. Um, yeah, Finance Committee meeting. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes passed unanimously. Okay. Any topics that we did not anticipate that we need to discuss? All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We will come back together at uh, 730 for the uh, main Norfolk County Advisory Board meeting. We're going to call the roll. All right. Avon is here. Bellingham. Braintree. Here. Brookline. Here. Canton. Yes. Cohasset. Dedham. Yeah. Dover. Foxborough. Here. Franklin. Yeah. Holbrook. Medfield. Medway. Millis. Milton. Needham. Here. Norfolk. Norwood. Plainville. Here. Quincy. Here. Randolph. Here. Sharon. Here. Stoughton. Here. Walpole, Wellesley, Here. Westwood, Weymouth, Rentham. 73.57. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, before we start, let's say the pledge and um, together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, introduce uh, uh, Chairman Shea. Uh, we are here on your in your territory, Mr. Shea. Thank you. Uh, before I start uh, with some quick introductions, and then I'm going to keep my comments to the golf course since we're here and uh, we have a lot of activity going on. I want to mention that we're on Quincy Cable tonight. Uh, we welcome them and we invited them, so uh, we'll act accordingly. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, this, and I, I'm going to introduce everyone that, I, that is here from the staff, and then we've got a couple of brief comments about changes that are coming or have already started at the golf course. We're here tonight with Carl Miner, uh, director of the golf course, and our assistant director, Club Pro, uh, Dana Smith. Uh, I think for the first time formally, I want to introduce John Martin, who's our superintendent of schools. And we've had several meetings at his, his facility. <laughs> Treasurer Bellotti is here. Assistant Treasurer Joe DeOrier is here. Uh, Bill O'Donnell is here with two staff members, Marguerite First Assistant and Ed Wheeler. And of course, our ever-present staff, of John Mullen, County Director. Bill, <laughs> John, 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 John Mullen. John, 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 I got it half right, John Mullen. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's good stuff. We, we've been in a mood, to, we've been blaming Mike Mullen for anything went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Michelle Labadini, our human resource specialist. And I did introduce Phil before I introduced John Mullen. Okay, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. We're uh, always uh, thankful for what the advisory board does for the county. 
Uh, I will mention at the outset also uh, County Attorney Scott Lopez is with us tonight. I know he probably wishes he was somewhere else, but he's with us and we want to uh, welcome him. I don't know if you noticed on your way in that the, the, the city of Quincy put a whole new street with a sidewalk, granite curves, etc. About a year and a half ago, Carl and I uh, toured the golf course with Mayor Tom Koch of Quincy. And Mayor Koch's history is, before he was mayor, he was park director. So he's everything trees, everything open space. And in a very nice way, he said, you know, what about this, what about that? And then we said, well, what about this, what about that? So we agreed, and some of the stuff is ongoing. So the, the new street, bought and paid for by the city of Quincy, which is fine. <coughs> this 100-acre facility is, I, I say this for Treasure, uh, Commissioner Collins' uh, behalf. It's half in Quincy and half in Milton, 198-plus acres. The heartbeat, the guts, the facilities are all in Quincy. <laughs> but under our capital budget approved this year, we have a maintenance facility roof, $50,000, a new restroom on the golf course, $75,000. We're going to repave, fix this parking lot and reline it and try to gather some more parking. That's $200,000. And we have ongoing uh, golf course ground improvement. Each year, Carl usually brings in a, a hole that's going to be rebuilt, uh, redone, and he tries to keep ahead of it, uh, all under the public bidding process. And that's it. that figure is 80000 That money's all in the capital budget. In our regular budget, in some form or another, is a new walkway and two new walkways on the 14th and 15th tee. The new staircase to the 15th hole, which has been changed considerably. We need a, a new <coughs> extension, which is $10,000. We need some cabling work, which is $4,600. We're going to do it. And we need a tee time software package, uh, which was a, a product of the uh, Abraham's report in order to help uh, Carl and Dana uh, keep track of uh, the golfers. There's a new seat of fence going somewhere in the property. It's $15,000. Pickleball, pickleball renovations. This is a recreation facility. It isn't only a golf course. We have other, <coughs> other venues that we supply. Pickleball is new, but one of our courts had been converted to pickleball. Now we're going to redo the pickleball court. It's the last one in the line of the tennis courts. The pickleball people are very uh, fervent. They're new, but uh, I believe they're here to stay. So we're, we're working with the pickleball people. Exactly. There's all new signage out here, out in the front, and there is a sign out on on Granite Ave in, 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 in Milton, and it's part of the same package that you see out here, but it is not up yet. We have to build a new stanchion, but we, that's $8,500. Uh, and then there is some discussion about new lighting. We had a long winter here. It was three or four breaks in the middle of the winter. Uh, and it was in the maintenance facility, so we have to make some changes there. There's some discussion in new lighting. But the capital part that we agreed with Mayor Koch about is, I don't know if anyone's noticed, when you come in to the left, it's the left of this building, but it's behind the parking lot. There is, there is some swings. There are some picnic tables there, and there are some benches. i going out on a limb to tell you that you can't sit on the benches. You'd be probably taking your life in your hands <laughs> if you swing, use the swings. And that whole hill is going to be reconstructed with those trees. So that's all coming out, and there's going to be a new, a new kitty top park, which will be done I'm going to walk the limb and say before November 1st of this year. Now, we, we're paying for some of it. The Great General Court gave us $75,000. So we want to thank uh, our Quincy delegation. Lucy has brought it in. and uh, It went right through, and they have delivered. 
This is a company that, uh, Massachusetts based company that they bid, and this is their rendering of what's going to go there, <coughs> along with uh, new benches which are in that other batch of money. So, this is the first, uh, some of these things are done, but this is the first new thing that we're going to see. It, it will uh, have some sort of public presentation and invited. So, we, we aren't only a golf course. The, the county commissioners in the 1970s, uh, in their wisdom, I, I believe Peter's father was the chairman, uh, bought this golf course from the old Walson Golf Course, which is moved to Belton, as you know. Uh, we've, we've looked at a clubhouse. Charlie Ryan reminds me to look at it again, and we are. But it's not in this money that I spoke to you about, but we're turning a corner here. And I think they're having a good year. I know they are, and a day like today only, only, only supports that. I want to greet everyone, and I want to say one thing in leaving. I, uh, I, I'm so fortunate to be working with Peter Collins, a person who has the history of the, of the county down very well, and past history of the board, and uh, yeah, I find it very helpful. And of course, I welcome uh, Commissioner Stady, who is in his first term, but he brings the enthusiasm that he displayed long ago to all of you as a member not only of the Canton Board of Selectmen, but Canton's, <clears throat> Canton's representative on the advisory board. I don't know how he did over 30 years, but in that in itself uh, qualifies him for a lot of things now. I think he's passed the torch. I, not this, to, 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 to Mr. <laughs> Paul Connors? Or, well, he passed John, the Canton John torch Bonnet. to John Connors. Like but I think Paul is the most senior man now. Oh. Good luck to him. <laughs> he's always back. Oh, well, I thought you should be your chairs over here, isn't it? Oh, okay. All right. So that, that's my comments. Uh, again, we can't say thank you enough. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, the ad, the addition of the uh, this this so-called uh, opera funds, as we call them, uh, is going very very well. Uh, I think as of today, we had another another award to the town of Milton. Out of our designated, is it 236? 137. 137. We, we're at 25 million, and it's going very well. And, and please, tell your selectmen, tell your town managers, tell your executive secretaries, your finance board, put it in. If it, if it, if it doesn't go around the first round, we have people who are working, uh, our accountants and lawyers, and they're working very well. Don't don't hesitate because if it's if it's off a little and it doesn't conform with the federal regs and there are a lot of them, we'll work with you. They send it back. You can come back. We're back and forth. I think we're on the cusp of a very uh, group. Uh, hopefully next week we're going to finish up a large award to the town of Stoughton. And uh, this is the charge we've been given. It was all new to us a year and a half ago, but we're well into it and so far it's going good. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shea. I just want to um, thank you, Treasurer Bellotti, for coming by. It's really nice of you to be here. And thank hopefully you. those ceiling tiles are going to work. Hopefully your ceiling tiles are going to help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I just want to also tell the board, unfortunately, Joe Reardon sends his regrets. He's unable to be here tonight. And so I am pinch hitting. And uh, so those of you who are very knowledgeable about how this works, you'll just have to help me out. Um, all right. Um, we, our next item of business, thank you, um, Commissioner Shea, is our next item of business is the executive session. Um, and this is um, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. And the chair is declaring, that's me, that there is an, that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body as the chair so declares. So I would appreciate it if I could have a motion to go into executive session. So Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. OK. Um, now we do have to take a vote on this. Um, all right. So um, all you parliamentarians, this does not have to be a roll call, or it does, it does. have to be a roll call? It does because it's executive session. Yeah, OK. Exactly. Exactly. OK. Thank experience. you very much. Um, Eric, go for it. <laughs> Avon, go tie. Stand by. Hold on. I'm sorry.
it's a little intimidating to have a room full of parliamentarians and try to do this up here, let me tell you. <laughs> okay. Ready? Ready. All right. Amon votes aye. Bellingham. Yes. Braintree. Aye. Brookline. Aye. Canton. Yes. Cohasset. Dedham. Yes. Dover. Foxboro. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Holbrook. Medfield. Medway. Millis. Milton. Needham. Norfolk. Norwood. Plainville. Yes. Quincy. Yes. Randolph. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Stoughton. Yes. Walpole. Wellesley. Yes. Westwood. Weymouth. Rentham. Sir Phil. Weymouth is not here. I don't believe so. Did I, is Weymouth here? I had to be here. Still a quorum. Sixty eight point one. Sixty eight point one. The motion passes. Okay. Um we are now going to go into executive session. Okay. We are back in open session. I wanna thank the um are you all set up? I wanna thank um all the people here, all the patrons here, uh, thank you for being so patient with us while we did our executive session. Okay. Um, now that we are back in executive session, um, we do need to take a couple votes um, at following in, op in the open meeting, following the um, conversation which we had in executive session. And these are votes in the open public meeting. So um, I would... Uh, I would like to. Uh, I would like a motion um, to uh, appoint Scott Lopez as counsel to the Norfolk County Advisory Board for the purpose of representing us as a defendant in the case with the Register of Deeds. Is that so correct? Moved. So moved. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, this does not have to be a roll call vote, correct? It does not. It does, it does not. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. It does not. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The, the motion carries unanimously. Okay. The second issue we will deal with as part of the FY23 budget. Um, is that correct? Okay, yes, it's part of the FY23 budget, which is the funding for the representation. Okay, um, so now we are moving on to the uh, FY23 budget. And um, I think we're going to start with you, uh, Director Cronin, and uh, we will uh, get some background and then we will proceed with that. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Charles. Can everybody hear me okay? I'll try to speak up um, and be brief. Your packets in preparation of the meeting, you were given a spreadsheet that was titled the FY23 Supplemental Budget Request. Um, earlier today, the commissioners took a vote on an amendment to that document. Hopefully, when you uh, walked in this evening, you received a one-pager, two sides. That's the updated version. I encourage you to grab that. That would be the master sheet. So again, this would be the item I'll speak to this, uh, this evening. In addition, I have a PowerPoint deck that looks like this. If you have a copy, that's great. You can follow along. I would just like you to appreciate these are screenshots from the supplemental budget spreadsheet. You may see some inconsistencies in the PowerPoint because this was done yesterday. Apologies. Bottom line and the vote that you'll take will be against the spreadsheet. Is that okay? Everybody understand? So I'm going to use this PowerPoint for ease of communication and explaining what the position of the county is and what our requests are. The vote will be against the spreadsheet. I'll proceed. Can everybody hear me okay? We good? So good. Okay. So as we begin, our agenda will feature an FY23 financial overview, including a surplus plan discussion, stabilization plan, capital plan, supplemental needs, and our OPEB plan. We'll also talk about FY23 observations ahead, 
a brief, a brief discussion on the Information Technology Consolidation, and finally, the American Rescue Plan Act. <clears throat> In FY23, we are realizing a surplus from FY22 that totaled $5,039,425.48. And 48 cents. From that, we are forward funding $600,000 in our FY23 budget that you approved on May 11th. Consequently, our operating surplus is adjusted to $4,439,425. This evening, I'm recommending that we transfer $1 million to our stabilization account, $1 million to our capital spending plan for FY23, and $1 million for forward funding for the FY24 capital budget. That results in a FY23 supplemental budget of $1,239,425. It is from this number that we'll be discussing the draw of the following supplemental items. Last week, the commissioners evaluated whether or not to commit the $200,000 that is proposed to be spent towards our OPEB liability. The commission is elected to put off that vote until later in the fiscal year. So for now, that'll sit unassigned, but I expect to come back through this board after discussing it with the commissioners, likely in the spring, uh, we will move $200,000 or so to, to our OPEB liability. And I'll talk about that liability piece in just a minute. <clears throat> Overall, our financial stabilization is in very good shape. Uh, the Abrahams Group um, Financial Plan Section 4.5 recommended that our county stabilization be no less than 5% or greater than 20% of our operating budget. Last year, our current, our stabilization fund balance of 4.9 million represented 14.8% of our operating budget. With this transfer of a million dollars, we'll elevate the fund balance to $5.9 million, or just under 18%, nearly our cap of 20%. Regarding our FY23 capital plan that was proposed to the commissioners in September of 2021, it was approved in June of 2022. We are looking forward to filing the uh, proposed FY24 capital plan uh, later this month to the commissioners, and uh, we will fund it later this year. FY24. On to the supplemental needs. Now again, I just want to inform you, you may see some slight inconsistencies between the uh, PowerPoint and the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet rules, okay? <laughs> supplemental. Um, I will go quickly if there's any questions. Um, do you want to hold them until the end? Is that your choice, Manager? I, I, that'd be great. Can we hold questions till the end? Just make a, make a note to yourselves and we'll do them all at the end. You'll see some uh, items that are noted in green. Those are items that would be attributed as cost against the Registry of Deeds Excise Fund. In this matter, the supplemental needs from information technology include the request for a new position. The advisory board may recall that the Ripples Group delivered a report to the county this past spring, made several recommendations, including hires. After discussion with our technology team, we are recommending a new hire of a network administrator. We're proposing an annual salary of $90,000 when prorated for FY23 will cost $55,000. Excuse me, my eyesight's failing me. I should have worn my glasses. Um, and I, I can't read the balance, to be honest. Uh, the, the cost of that FY23 will be split between the county cost and uh, through supplemental and the registry uh, share through registry deeds excise of $27,692.51. The Information Technology Division also requests two RICO copiers for the Registry of Deeds that will be 100% funded from Deeds Excise, one plotter for the Registry of Deeds, one, and to replace one virtual host server. Um, and then finally, uh, we're looking to customize the county, uh, the new county internet web portal. Uh, some of you may have seen our new county website. If you haven't, I encourage you to log on. We're looking to uh, activate a portal which will allow employees of the county to go in and see all updated procedures, policies, benefit information, collective bargaining agreements, and anything that's related to policies. This will be a landing spot that many of us have experienced in our other professional obligations, and this will be a, a, a new tool for employees to utilize going forward. We'll need to customize that. We're asking for $10,000. Walls and golf course. Um, as Commissioner Shea started on this evening talking about the golf course, uh, we're going to have to forward fund $75,000 to complete the uh, obligation of the 
uh, new playground out front. That is an earmark that we will receive from the state later this fiscal year. So you're just prepaying it now. We'll get the credit later. This becomes a wash. The Granite Street core sign needs uh, $4,600 more to complete the installation. As Commissioner Shea said, portion of that was previously funded. We now need to uh, relocate it onto the golf course, pour footings, and uh, correctly install it. In July, the golf course experienced a pretty significant main irrigation water uh, failure. The cost of that was $10,000. We're looking to recoup that cost for, those, for that repair. Please note that this um, PowerPoint includes the original request of $60,000 for registry legal services and $32,000 for legislative advocacy services. Earlier today, the commissioners voted to support $20,000 legal services cost for the registry. They elected not to fund the $32,000 for the legislative advocacy services. So that's a, that's a change from the PowerPoint to your spreadsheet. The Norfolk County Agricultural High School is requesting $100,000 to conduct a feasibility study for a new cafeteria. Uh, John Martin was here earlier. I believe he may have gone, but uh, Ed Little's here. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the school's cafeteria was built, I believe, in 1970. It's a 40,000 square foot space. It is well beyond useful life. It has chronic roof issues, heating issues, cooling issues. It's a, it's a major problem for the schools from an operational standpoint. This feasibility study will examine the current condition of the uh, space whether it's worth it to renovate it or, or should we look at new construction. So the feasibility will touch on all corners of, of design as well as um, recommendations for future use. Yeah, page two, two. Our maintenance facility has several items uh, in play, including uh, new restrooms at 614 High Street. Please note that this cost, is, which is a hard quote, quote may include uh, items that are reimbursable through the American Rescue Plan Act. The ARPA grant does feature um, payments for certain services that promote good hygiene, obviously good air circulation. We're looking at approximately 25000 of that cost to come back through the ARPA grant once the work is done, so that you could possibly experience another $25,000 credit once that work is completed. The Quincy District Court requires a new Freon work. Bro Brookline District Court requires gutters and downspouts. $163,000. Um, that cost may appear to be high, but I want to remind folks if they're not familiar with the court, that is a uh, older court. Uh, it has beautiful architecture like many of our courts do. These are copper gutters and copper downspouts, and they will encompass the entire uh, facility. Stoughton District Court um, needs improved exterior lighting pursuant to the Chief Justice request. We had a cost overrun on the registry boiler repair from FY22 of $23,900. The county owns a small building, house if you will, behind uh, District Court. It's called the Blue House on Old River Place. Uh, we have purchased new windows uh, costing $7,978. Those will be installed by maintenance staff assigned to the county this winter. We are also received a quote to paint this building, which is in very tough shape in terms of paint, and that cost would be $17,500. I believe this board uh, approved a new roof for that building last year, and that has already been installed. Uh, we require extensive masonry work at Rentham, Dedham, and Superior Court, mainly repointing of the stairs in areas where a lot of the masonry has failed. That cost is $34,649. Our engineering department has previously requested a van purchase. It ran into a supply issue associated with the delivery of a 2022 Ford T250. They now um, have been told they can only procure a 2023 Ford T250. There is an upcharge. If you haven't bought a car lately, I think you know what this is all about. In addition, they require some fit out of that car, that, that vehicle, it will cost $12,000. In addition, the engineering department requests $2,000 for civil and survey law books. The treasurer's office is requesting uh, $17,199 for a new ceiling installation. If you haven't been in the treasurer's office, they have an original ceiling with ceiling tiles that are falling off that are adhered to with mastics. Uh, this will create a drop ceiling grid for them to have a more improved lighting experience with LED and more sensible lighting. Uh, the Commissioner's Office has the need to fund FY22 unpaid bills totaling $15,000. And in, in FY22, a year ago, um, when I was before you, we talked about the supply stream issues associated with a lot of the capital uh, bids and costs we were experiencing. We were chasing the market. Many of you who are involved in your local communities are probably doing the same thing. We are in my community. We put in place a 10% upcharge um, or contingency on any of these items. 
and it worked. We used a, a fair amount of that in FY22. We're asking again in FY23 for your consideration of funding $56,207 that is only on the capital items. That does not apply to feasibility studies and things like that. So overall, we're looking to spend approximately $964,701. It would be offset by $177,192 uh, associated with the Registry of Deeds Fund. So in total, the county is asking for $787,508 out of the surplus. Um, last fiscal year at this time, you folks approved a first supplemental that totaled $650,000. Um, if we back out the cost of the $75,000 for the earmark and the $25,000 expected <clears throat> to come back from ARPA, that's about $100,000. Uh, we would be spending roughly 687000 or near what we were a year ago. So scale-wise, we're very close to where we were in FY22. It'll leave us with just under a half a million dollars, $451,000 to address the remaining issues associated with obligations in FY23. Looking ahead, I, I do like to take the uh, opportunity with the advisory board present, as I did with the commissioners earlier, to go through observations ahead. These are items that are beyond the supplemental, but of interest to you. Please note that the Dedham Superior Court Dome project has been completed. It came out quite nice. Uh, we're very happy with the product. The, de the Dedham Superior Court will be dedicated on October 16, 2022, <coughs> to former Congressman William Delahunt. The county uh, capital plan in, um, and uh, includes new boilers, boilers and heating systems for Rentham de District Court. One of the items that we're running into is the unique way that our, our courts are heated. Many of them are older. Rentham, for example, is steam heat, and one of the items that ARPA features is the ability to offset the cost of providing improved air circulation. Steam heat does not, you know, circulate air, but it does promote the possibility of using uh, an improved and an efficient burner uh, that goes in front of the steam. My friend from Mass Maritime, who's standing in the back, has a much better jargon to explain boilers and steam heats, things like that, than I could. Charlie, it's all yours if you want to take that. Other than that, I hope you understand, we're going to be looking for use of ARPA money to offset some of the improvements that our heating systems need in the courthouses using ARPA funds. Quincy District Court site appraisal has been completed and received by the commissioners. We are keeping the value of that range confidential at this time. We have engaged with the Department of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, um, and we will proceed legally through Chapter 7, 7C, Chapter 30B, and 34, Section 14. The state and the county have similar but competing general laws on how to dispose of property. So I'll be use, using the services of Scott Lopez as we deal with the county, excuse me, with the Commonwealth over the next several months. I think it's safe to say that we are measured in many months before we see the disposition of that court, likely one to two years. Uh, things can change as we expect a transition of um, government at the state level. Uh, incoming new governors have a way of slowing things down, so we'll see how that impacts the process ahead. Administratively, the county has contracted with the Collins Group to prepare a new employee handbook. Uh, the product will replace the 1987 version and align with uh, school policies and collective bargaining agreements. The county has been in negotiations with three AFSCME units for new three-year contract for the last six months. We're hoping an agreement for these um, uh, particular uh, Contracts will be in place this fall. We'll coordinate the financial impact with the advisory board chair for the timing of this next meeting. If we happen to accelerate and, 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 and get closure on these contracts before your December meeting, I'll work with your advisory, advisory board chair for a possible advisory board pop-up meeting to approve that impact. Otherwise, we'll wait until December. And then finally, the Wallace Recreational Facility, as Commissioner Shea indicated, We'll have a new playground this fall, previous county appropriation coupled with the state air mark. <coughs> we'll fund this new feature and additional improvements include, as Commissioner Shea said, a new maintenance facility roof, extensive new parking lots, and a new restaurant. I'd like to now move, Mr. Madam Chair, if you'd mind, into the remaining pieces of the presentation. So I go right ahead. Um, regarding the information technology consolidation update, as the, as the board understands, the consolidation occurred on July 1st, 2022. The tasks undertaken to date include an assessment of current conditions, and that includes current obligations, contracts, and services. We defined a strategy of collaboration through weekly meetings, open dialogue. We drafted a plan, a memorandum of, of agreement for the work ahead, and we furthermore did an assessment of current duties, 
contract obligations that help reveal any risk involved with current conditions. That's how we started the fiscal year. So since then, what have we been up to? So uh, we completed cross-training of existing staff to ensure backup and coverage during periods of absences. Per the recommendation, recommendations of the Ripples Group, we prepared a new position request of the network administrator. <coughs> Excuse me. We planned temporary worker backfill to fill the role of the desktop support, previously temp vacated on September 2nd. And per the Ripples Group report, we planned for and completed a full county penetration test of our firewall. Results were favorable with minor remedies needed. Regarding the Chief Information Officer position, on May 11th, the Advisory Board approves the consolidation. On May 17th, we posted the CIO position. We received over 15 applications. On June 22nd, we started interviewing four candidates for the Chief Information Officer position. And on July 31st, the commissioners promoted Dan Caparata to interim CIO. Dan, as you know, may know, is assigned to the registry. We advanced two candidates to the final uh, round. One candidate was not recommended for hire following the second round. The second candidate prevailed. On August 15th, an extended, we extended an offer to the preferred candidate with conditional approval of increased wage rate by the advisory board on August 17th, which you did provide. I regret to inform you yesterday, September 13th, after um, extensive negotiations with the candidate, he has withdrawn. He was looking for more progressive remote uh, participation, uh, remote work options, if you will, for this position, and it withdrew. We have reposted the position with a new wage range of 129,000 to 145,000. We've expanded our search area. We have received additional um, resumes, and I'm happy to report tomorrow with Chuck Phelan's help, we'll be conducting another round of interviews. Moving on. The American Rescue Plan Act. Um, briefly, the county was awarded $137,282,760 in ARPA funds. Our first award was made on December 1st, 2021 to the great town of Dover. I'm showing you a breakout of where the funds are used. Um, this is on our uh, website. If you chose to go on the new county website, you'll see a description of each award. I've actually handed those out as part of your packet. And you can see overwhelmingly most of our communities are using their funds for infrastructure purposes. A few other facts and then I'll wrap this up, Chairman. So Chairman Shea indicated to date the counties have the county commissioners have awarded $25,737,785 in $0.84. Cents. These awards have been distributed to 17 of the 28 cities and towns. Norfolk County Portal has received exactly 100 applications as of today from 20 of the 28 communities. And just a reminder, administratively, the counties withheld 3% of the grant with a breakout of 2.5% for administering the grant for auditors, legal uh, services, and salaries, and 0.5% or 685,000 for eligible project costs for the county. I want to re remark, I think I mentioned to you before in prior meetings, um, Norfolk County has the lowest administrative fee of any of the counties in Massachusetts. That is all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, several items of business included in the director's report. The first one, is the FY23 supplemental budget. The second one is the report that we have requested from the director um, each at each of our meetings about the IT consolidation. Yes. When will it be appropriate to address the IT matter? We're going to do that. That'll be the second item after the FY23. Okay, yep. thank you. And then the third, the third um, item is the ARPA uh, follow-up in, in, in case there are questions. So let's take them in the order um, that they are on the agenda. Let's start with the FY23 supplemental budget request. Yes, Mr. Padula. Just one question. Uh, yep. On the back side, the unpaid bills, what's in the amount again? They, they have... 15000 I think. Yep, the updated version is 15000 Okay. So yep. I must have, I must have yep. One. yep. Okay. Yep. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So the first item is the FY23 supplemental budget request as presented to us um, and approved by the commissioners today. And um, I want to uh, report out to you about the finance committee. Yes, Mr. Polito. Okay. I have a question about that we're going to go right to it. So yes, you can go right ahead. Yeah, the, uh, just a, the issue of the, uh, uh, the, uh, what you need, those, are those costs usually a charge that, are those usually a cost charge to register or that different? Under, okay. under the supplemental IT. Okay, we can ask that question. Yes. Can we ask? Can we they're normal in the budget or they're new or they're charged over the years? Or 
Are you referring to the uh, copier, the, the plotter, and no, the equipment? Green. Yeah, those yeah. Are, those are in green. Yeah. As well as the, those are costs that would be assigned directly and for the exclusive use of the registry. Without the normal charge, that would be charged that same way. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yep. The other question is uh, uh, Norfolk County uh, School. I see you're doing a pre study for the cafeteria. These are have a death. My understanding is that it came before the trustees. Never came to vote in discussion with the trustees. Why did it come to? Why wasn't the trustees involved in discussion? I'm not debating. We don't need that this bill. I'm not okay. process. Okay. It should be to me. If the summit is a school, it should come from the trustees first. Then the commissioners, and then to us. Okay. My understanding, it didn't go to the trustees, and that's that's my issue. I'm not against that. But the process used is flawed. If you talk about some of the earlier flawed. This is a flawed situation to me. Okay. Let me talk about that issue. Yeah. Mr. Lou, would you like to speak to that at all? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Kremen, would you speak to that? So, generally, Mr. Polito is right. We would expect the uh, the board in this case to be aware of the trustees to be aware of the of, of the cost. We don't control their agenda. The trustees are controlled by the chair and the school superintendent. Um, the superintendent asked for this uh, particular item, so we're carrying it based on their ask and the co commissioner's approval, which, as you know, include three trustees. The omission is, I'll, I'll, I, do, I don't mean to direct it back to the chairman, but the omission of the trustee vote is on them. We, we, we proceed unilaterally without them in this case. Well, maybe you should put off to the next meeting, so they next meeting, do the proper way. I'm, I'm saying, you know, but yeah, if you're circumventing the rules, I mean, the rules, you know, I'm not saying the rules are, but the process should be done that way there. If they get if the chairman and the, the, advisor, the trustee did know about it, then guess what? Put off to the next meeting and do it the proper way. Let them hear it out. Let them, let them give us their opinion because right now we have one person's opinion, the uh, the uh, superintendent director. Let that the whole trustees make their decision and then go to the commissioners and make their decision. It's all one people. Commissioners and them are the same people mostly. Three or not, not all not all set. So I'm gonna vote no because I think the procedure is called squad. Not I the study move we all been there. We don't need to work. Okay. But the process wasn't flawed and you can always talk about process here. We always talk about process, it wasn't done right. This was done right, so we should look at the process and follow the right way. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pudo. Would the commissioners like to say anything about this item as well? Anything you want to say? Um, I, Commissioner Shea. I, um, Tom is right. I, I did not go before the, uh, the, the school board, so to speak. I think, uh, as John said, we put it on there because they requested it. Okay. Um, I don't disagree on whether the board should hear it. I will say that when we talk about the cafeteria, the only thing I'd like to say is it's also the library. And uh, I create our agency that, that oversee mass secondary of schools, etc., have written us time again to say that our cafeteria is a way, way below grade and way before what's acceptable for a high school of this size. Uh, so cap cafeteria building really cafeteria and library so it's a very important okay. I mean I okay I thank see, you I see no reason there probably the superintendent was here I'm, I, I don't want to see that one that one second session yeah um I agree with Tom okay thank you very much Commissioner okay all right other points about the FY23 supplemental budget other points people would like to raise Please, Mr. Uh, Polito, yes? I paid bill with $15,000. What happened? Why the other? What happened? Came in late? Or Mr. Crumb. Mr. I don't know. Nope, that's exactly right. We received late invoices for obligations uh, beyond the reserve point in late August. So these are, there are a variety of bills involved here. I think many of them are HVAC. Uh, yeah, what? Many of them are from our HVAC vendor. Um, so they're from. Much... $1,000 to $15,000. Uh, small minds to 50 Yep, we received um, through our procurement department. We received additional uh, bills that came in uh, relative to, to, as I said, our HVAC vendor. There were okay, several. Thank you. Yep, late okay. invoices. Mr. Ryan. Thank you. I just have a comment on the um, the OTAP. I think with the other folks employment benefits, if we're doing very well on the budgetary perspective, we should probably be funding the other employees into that account that we can afford. Like 
Okay. All right. Um, and the intent, I guess, on the OPEPs is to put it in at a later supplement. Am right. I correct about that? Yeah. I'm okay. speaking for the commissioners, Charlie. They had it on okay. a, an idea that not attributing that money at this time provides more liquidity for the county in case we needed it beside, before encumber, um, excuse me, before depositing it into the OPEP fund. That's all. There is a commitment to do it later in the fiscal year. And this is in addition to the 100000 that's already in the budget, correct, that's for correct. OPEP? So this would be a total of 300000 for OPEP. Okay. All right. Um, I think any other discussion? It sounds to me like we should start with a main motion. We do. Okay. So the Finance Committee did uh, make a recommendation to you and voted unanimously to recommend this supplemental budget request minus the 20000 uh, for legal services to the Registry of Deeds, primarily because we felt that it was um, uh, continued, correct me if I'm saying this wrong, other members of the committee, primarily because we felt that it was um, uh, fostering a, a persistent um, issue that just was using public resources uh, for things that we should be able to work out in other ways. Is that correct? Mr. Connors, am I correct about saying, saying it? Okay, all right. Um, so that was our recommendation, um, and um, it was a unanimous recommendation. That does not mean the board has to follow that recommendation, but that is the recommendation. Okay, we heard on that. Would you like to be, uh, would you like to speak to this, to the supplemental budget? Sure. Register? Okay, um, I think it's time to do that. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Well, my uh, intention, of course, was to talk just about the IT and where we were. Uh, as far as, uh, and I, I still have that opportunity later just to yes. talk where we are. Yep, because, when we get to the uh, IT, you know, we'll do that. From where we sit, you know, I thought the registry has always provided good services to the uh, county and has run it like a business. And uh, there have been stresses with what happened on the, uh, with the, we think, a regression as far as uh, dealing with uh, consumer issues, dealing with cybersecurity, dealing with the fact that we have land records that go to people's homes that we need to take a, a special concern that they could be a victim of um, cyber security. Reg Register, would you try to limit your comments to the FY23 supplemental budget sure. right now, and then we'll come back to the IT in a moment? Please. Okay. Well, Thank it, you. again, on the IT request, uh, again, I don't know if, the, uh, if it was forwarded. This letter was forwarded July 7th to the county commissioners uh, requesting an amount. Uh, and again, it was requested... Uh, because, uh, and I quote the letter to the commission, is, it is an issue of fundamental fairness that the registry be placed on an equal footing with the county financially with respect to in litigating these impactful and important controversies. Based on the budget appearing on the county website, the county has a fiscal year 2023 legal budget of 140000 in comparison to the Registry of Deeds fiscal 2023 legal budget of just 7000 it is obvious that the Registry of Deeds attempt to seek judicial review and resources can all be too easily thwarted based not on the soundness of legal facts and law and arguments, but rather on the disparity of funds and the failure of means to elevate those legal facts and arguments so that they can be heard by and decided upon the court. Uh, basically, it comes down to an issue of access to justice. Um, with, with respect to this lawsuit, uh, and again, uh, I, you know, I, I recognize no one, the registry is not in the business of suing people. A couple of years ago, our legal budget was $6,000. Uh, in 2019, I believe we spent uh, $9,000. We do not go around suing people. That's just to conduct business. But I think it's important to kind of remember what has, you know, gotten us here. And what's gotten us here was on June 30th, 2021, the registry was left without a registry CIO by that vote, a two to one vote. Um, the IT situation on the registry still hasn't been resolved, but it started on June 30th. The registry of deeds did not pick this battle. Why was there a lawsuit? There was a lawsuit because this advisory board funded a registry CIO position. It was a legally approved and funded position, and it wasn't filled. This advisory board voted for that position. And again, what were we to do? I keep hearing all these plans. Back on June 30th, 
We were just Reg left without Register. a seat. Can I, can I interrupt you just one minute, please? Would you try to stick to the, um, the budget question first? And we will come back to the idea, well, and you will have another chance. But I want to try to keep us focused on voting on the dollars first. Okay. Right. I think okay. that, well, the budget question uh, ties to the lawsuit. And, and okay. again, I recognize it's okay. You think it's comfortable for the registry employees or myself to be here? You know, it, it, it's not, but we have to be. There's a, there's a disagreement, and there was a disagreement about what happened on June, uh, on June 30th, and that's why I'm speaking uh, about it, okay. because that lawsuit was filed because the registry was left with no other choice. We did not have a registry CIO. You need a registry CIO to oversee operations. Back on June 30th, 2021, and I'll get into this later with the IT, there was two and a half, there was a full-time registry CIO and there was an IT network administrator, Dan Caparata, who, who's here tonight, and we had a, a, a part-time person, two and a half people. But that lawsuit came about because we were just left without a, a position that's been in existence before I even got here, 40 years. I've been registered since 2002. We've always had a registry IT. So the legal issue is not, it, it gets spun all these ways. The legal issue is there was a lawfully and funded position. In fact, there were members on this finance committee on June 9th, 2021, that said all positions should be filled that were funded for that budget year. And it wasn't. That is the lawsuit. And again, we have to pursue that. Nothing has changed about that. And as far as, yes, I, I recognize there might be some, quote, quote, hard feelings. But I've kept the advisory board out of the lawsuit. That lawsuit, we had no choice but to file a lawsuit. We did not have a registry CIO. We collect $82 million. We record over 200,000 documents. We were left rudderless. And we were, you know, one of the recourses was a lawsuit. And uh, the reason why I, I bring that up about trying to keep the advisory board out, the IT, IT decision, that was hatched by, you know, not to get into it, the two county commissioners are here. It was a two to one vote. Um, Peter Collins and, and Joe Shea, and, and, and I think the county director has made decisions, and again, Bridget. I've tried to keep the advisory board out of it, and I do want to make clear, I was at a hearing where the county attorney, Scott Lopez, said that because of actions of the advisory board, that they should be a named defendant. So if there's any animosity because the advisory board has been named as a defendant, that was at the suggestion of the county attorney and was agreed to by the judge. So I understand. I'm asking people to put, set aside the fact that people have been, you know, there's a lawsuit going on. It really comes down to basic fairness, but I want that out there. Um, you know, that lawsuit was uh, filed uh, in 2021. The decision was June 30th, 2021, and in later uh, in July, we filed the lawsuit. Right. We haven't named the advisory board, but, you know, when, Register. when things like that Register. get sent. Are yes. you making the case that you need that $20,000 for your legal fees? I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying okay. to make that. Right. And I, okay. I, can, I just, can I just interrupt you for the minute? Because mm -hmm. I will, we will get back to the IT question. But I'd like to just ask the advisory board members if they have any further questions about whether or not the register is being clear about his need for the twenty thousand dollars. And if that because that's the question that we have in front of us right now. Is there anybody else that has any other questions for that? I think you've made your case, Ms. Register. Can you just wait until we get to the IC question? Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so let me just say one other thing. So the, the uh, register is making his case about the twenty thousand um, dollars in this budget for legal fees for the um, registry to conduct this lawsuit, of which the North the um, Norfolk County Advisory Board is a named defendant by the register. Um, I think you left out of your PowerPoint because it was on the spreadsheet, but not the PowerPoint. That there is another twenty thousand dollar line item in. The supplemental budget that we are voting on tonight um, that is twenty thousand dollars for the norfolk county advisory board to have legal representation to defend itself um, from the with the suit that the register has filed as we are now um, at, um amend it's he's amended the complaint to sue both the commissioners and the advisory board and i wanted to let you know that your executive board took a vote um, uh, when we had our executive uh, board meeting to uh, ask 
the commissioners for that $20,000 line item so that we would have some funds to defend ourselves. I did present that to the commissioners today. They did vote, I think, <coughs> three to zero to put that money into the supplemental request, and that is why it is before you tonight. Um, and, um, and I think that we should, um, for clarity's sake, um, uh, because we did have an executive uh, session earlier where we met with Scott Lopez, the attorney that we have now hired as our, uh, uh, rep as our representing attorney. I think for clarity's sake, it would be wise for the advisory board to take a motion, to take a vote on this amount of money as recommended to be part of the supplemental budget as approved by the commissioners earlier today before we take the vote on the full FY23 supplemental. Am I right? Is that right? Mr. Sadie, I'm looking at all you parliamentarians. We're trying to get this just right. I'm not taking a position. I don't okay. No, but, but I just want to make sure I'm doing it correct. It it's right. a little extra, but I feel like it's important. Okay. So could I get a motion for the um, Norfolk County Advisory Board to um, uh, include $20,000 in the FY23 supplemental budget request for uh, legal fees to, def uh, to defend itself in the uh, suit uh, as defendants from the Register of Deeds. Yes, Mr. Okay. Ryan. Thank you very much. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Ms. Padula. Uh, we don't have to do a roll call on this. We can do a vote. Yes. Is more than $20, right now, please. We are just voting on whether or not to include that $20,000 okay, in this you. FY23 okay. supplemental budget thank request you. You. for the Norfolk County Advisory Board's legal representation. Yes. Okay. okay. Yep, that, very good. Thank you, Mr. Polito. We want to be clear. Okay. I think we can do a voice vote on this. Just, yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, excellent. Okay. Now, let's start. We did that. We did that right after the executive session. Yes, okay. Yes. We have a couple things to clean up. We have a couple things to clean up. Okay, let's do them. So, in addition, uh, <laughs> vice board members, in addition to the supplemental items that I mentioned earlier, there are two transfers that would be part of the motion. Uh, the transfers are relatively minor. One would transfer $6,737 from the General Fund Insurance Reimbursement for a claim here on the golf course into their uh, automotive repair account, uh, as noted. I believe that's 5301. And also, uh, we're looking to move in our IT department 39400 from IT temporary salaries to IT professional technical services. As I mentioned earlier, um, the temporary worker that we had at the registry resigned on September 2nd, I believe it was. We're looking to uh, purchase services under a contract, so we're moving the balance of his funds into contract services. So I just want to clean that up. One other item, uh, Madam Chair, for a vote. Um, yes. I do want to remind the Chair and oh, the Vice Chair that we would require a, a vote on the Registry of Deeds um, FY23 budget as a result of realized actual expenditures. When you're ready for that, I'd be happy to explain. <coughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna take two votes here. I think we should do the first one on the Registry of Deeds actual expenditures first. Then we'll take the second vote on the FY23 supplemental budget and I will accept the main motion for that to start the discussion. Okay, uh, can we do the um, first is the requiring the motion um, to amend the FY23 Registry of Deeds appropriation. Can I may have some, so, will you make that motion? I'll make the motion Thank to you. amend the Fiscal 23 Registry of Deeds appropriation from $3,421,869.75 to $3,500,816, I'm sorry, $3,516,062.26. Yes. As approved by the commissioners on September 7th, 2022. Okay. Um, second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cronin, can you just explain that? Uh, yes, briefly. As uh, the advisory board is aware, when we constructed the registry budget in the spring, we based it upon projected expenditures um, using a, the, I believe it was the February trial balance um, costs associated with the registry. We now have actual costs. When you calculate the actual expenditures of the registry as of June 30th, um, and you apply the, the mandated 2.5% increase, it resulted in an increased spending level for the registry's budget, <coughs> excuse me, to adhere to Chapter 64D. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. So Polito? No, this this is about the registry yes. appropriation. So it's going up. Yep. It's going up. $94,000. $94,000 going up? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, I, uh, more discussion. Mr. Ryan? Mr. Bachelor, agree with this? Do you agree with the increase in your in the registry appropriation? It, it really It doesn't really matter what I say or don't say. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these, uh, these decisions are made. We haven't been consulted, so I'm just happy to, you know, it, it's their plan. Um, I'm, I'm just here, uh, you know, because in the in interest of fairness, to get the twenty thousand dollars that was approved at the commissioner's office, and again, uh, we requested more just to get that done. So as far as the plan, um, I'm, I'm just trying to focus on, on what's important, which is the, the IT. Uh, Register, we certainly have heard from you tonight. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay, Mr. Cronin? Uh, relevant to uh, Mr. Ryan's question, the developments that were stated were revealed to the Register on Tuesday, August 30th, where we explained what was occurring with the appropriation. Happy to answer any questions. We received no response from the Register. Okay. All right. Again, there was an email uh, saying that it was a, there were appropriations. I don't quite understand. I've been I've been around here doing budgets a long time with all these arrows and everything. I didn't I don't quite understand that. All I know is we made a request, two requests that the registry made uh, using dedicated deeds excise money, which by statute we're allowed to use. One was for a sixty thousand dollar request for attorney's fees, and the other was thirty two thousand um, dollars for a legislative agent that's been in existence here at the uh, registry. Um, I was told 2006, I believe it's earlier than that, 2003. Those were the two requests that we made to increase uh, the monies for the deeds excise. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Padula. Just a question. So if the registrar has gotten notice of this, and he says he doesn't have, he has, doesn't care what happens with it, why, if, if he doesn't weigh in on it, why are we voting on him to give him this money other than that we're obligated to do it? That's if he why. says he doesn't, doesn't know about it, it makes no difference, mm -hmm. why are we going to allocate the money? I just Do you want to explain that? Because it's part it's, of the law. it's part of the mandate, Peter. It's That's the, the sixty four D yeah. It's it's our fiscal responsibility to make sure that we meet the mandate um, according to the law. Right. And notice yeah. was given yeah. on August thirtieth. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, we are we're doing what what the law requires us to do, which is to make sure he has the money that he's supposed to have. Great, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Can I get a vote on this? Let's get a vote on this motion. Um, all in favor. The Our motion is to is to amend the fiscal 23 registry of deeds appropriation yep. from 3.4 3 million four hundred twenty one thousand eight sixty nine seventy five to three million five hundred sixteen thousand sixty two dollars and twenty six cents as yes. approved by the commissioners September 7th 2022. Yeah. Right, let's reboot that. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Now the second motion on the table is the FY23 supplemental budget request as presented by the um, county director and in the total amount of, do you want to read that, Eric? Yeah, the amount <laughs> was $2,938,838.31. That includes the transfers. The that, does that include the transfers? It does. It does. The it transfers, is. the appropriations for capital, the appropriations stabilization. for stabilization does not include OPEB at this time. It does include the 20000 for the register as well. Okay. And the advisory board. Yeah. It includes all of the supplemental needs as delineated in the spreadsheet, and it includes all of the upper level transfers for stabilization and capital. Everybody heard that. Okay. Okay. So I will accept a main motion to the finance committee recommendation was to um, ex to pass the FY23 supplemental budget request with an amendment to eliminate the twenty thousand dollars for legal services for the registry. That was the finance committee's recommendation. Was nine. Second. Okay, hold on, hold on. We got to get our motion clear here. Okay. We need. Okay. I was making a motion. Okay. 
Okay, so Mr. Connors is making a motion to accept the FY23 supplemental budget request, not according to the not according to the presentation of the director as a, um, as put forth by the commissioners, but the finance committee recommendation, which is the FY23 supplemental minus the twenty thousand dollars for the registry of deeds. Okay, so that's the motion on the table, and Mr. Ryan, you're a second for that. Okay, all right. Now discussion, Mr. Phelan. Uh, just a question on it. Um, I, I'm, I agree with the commissions what they did. Okay. The money in there, I would not um, take it. So I don't want to vote against the whole budget because I agree with everything else in it. And basically, if you take the recommendation of the finance committee, you're forcing people to vote against the whole thing, which I don't, you know, which I, I don't think is. I think it would have been more appropriate as a point of order vote on the motion that is before us, which is the recommendation, and then add an amendment to take it out. Otherwise, i got to vote against the whole thing, which is not what I want to do. Okay, Mr. Mr. Perdula, I'm going to get some help here. <laughs> so, so my understanding is that the commissioners made the recommendation of this budget. Yes. And that there were some requests for some monies by the register, and the recommendation from the commissioners was $20,000 to the register. Yes. And that's, that's what I assume, to help fund some of his legal expenses which I can assume may have something to do with the lawsuit that he had against us at the body. Yes. So having said that, uh, it was a two to one vote by the commissioners. Uh, they thought it was appropriate to fund uh, some monies to the register. They put in 20,000 and I'm in favor. Of that. So I'm stuck in the same position that Mr. Phelan is. So okay. Uh, I can... May I ask a parliamentary question from some of you who are experts? If we vote on the motion that is on the floor by Mr. Connors and we voted down, can we then take up the motion for the FY23 budget as, promo as presented by the commissioners? Yes. 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 It would be a new motion. It would be a new motion. Okay. So I just want to make clear to people that that is an option, that we can vote down the motion that was the recommendation from the Finance Committee. We can vote it down. And then we can take up the motion as presented by the commissioners. It does not preclude us from taking that up. Mr. Padula, you're, I'm, I'm deferring a little bit to some no, of these parliamentarians. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. I just want to, why not entertain a potential motion to add the 20,000, from the amendment to add the 20,000 into the budget. Okay. That's another way to do it. Another way to do it is, a, is a, an <coughs> amendment on the main motion to put the $20,000 back. And, um, and then we would vote, then we wouldn't have to take a whole second vote. That's another way to do it. Excellent. Um, okay, it's still required to vote. Yeah. Right. On the amendment and then the main motion. Okay. All right. I will I will accept that. Will you accept that as an am amendment, a friendly amendment, Mr. Connors, or we're just going to vote on the amendment? We're going to vote on the amendment. Okay. All right. We'll need a vote. A second. Thank you, Mr. Phelan. Okay. So what we have on the table is a main motion, which is the Finance Committee recommendation with an amendment um, to add back the $20,000 for the uh, legal fees for the registry is recommended by the commissioners, correct? So the first motion will be the, the on the amendment. We are going to vote on the amendment first. Okay. Um, I think we can do a voice vote on this. We don't have to do roll call. No, I, no, I think we're going to have to roll call. These two yeah. things. I we need to do roll call. Do. Okay. All right. This is, this is why I've got a room full of you who know what it is, how to do it. Okay. Here we go. All right. We're going to do a roll call on the amendment first. Any further discussion before we take the vote? Mr. Polito, the amendment is what? The, the, to, the add, to replace the $20,000 for legal services to the registry okay. that the commissioners originally recommended. That okay, that's I right. Just want to make sure I'm going to vote against it because I still have a problem with the uh, with the uh, A school gas Okay, all right. Okay, we don't, have an, we don't have a motion on that yet. No, no, I'm, 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 You're not going to make a motion. Okay, all right, okay. Any other discussion on the amendment? Everybody's clear what we're doing? Okay, here we go. Mr. Beckerman, we're ready. You ready, Phil? Second. No. Phil's got to get this ready. Got to catch up. Ready, Phil? Yes. You ready? Okay. We're ready for a roll call on the amendment. 
roll call to add the 20,000 back into yes. the budget to match the commissioner's original suggestion. Yes, it is. All right. Avon votes no. Bellingham. No. Braintree. No. Brookline. Yes. Canton. No. Can you just slow down? Sorry. Braintree was no. Correct. Braintree was no, correct? Correct. Yep. Correct. Brookline, Brookline was yes. Yep. Canton. Canton was no. Correct. Okay. Canton was no. Correct. Okay. Three. Cohasset. Dedham. Yes. Dover. Foxborough. No. Franklin. Yes. Holbrook. Medfield. Medway. Millis. Milton. Needham. No. Norfolk. Norwood. Plainville. Yes. Quincy. Yes. Randolph. No. Sharon. No. Stoughton. Yes. Walpole. Wellesley. Yes. Westwood. Weymouth. Rentham. At 45.79 yes to 22.31 no. So the yes passes so 20,000 goes back into the original request. 45.79 to 22.31. So yes, the amendment passes to replace the twenty thousand for the Registry of Deeds Legal Services as as recommended by the commissioners. Okay, now now we will take a vote on the main motion with as amended, uh, right? Correct. Right. We're going to have a main motion as amended, and that is it. All it actually in effect is the commissioners' recommended budget. Okay, all right. Um, I think we need to do this by roll again. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a we have a first we have a motion and a second on the table. Is there any discussion on the main motion as amended, which in effect is the commissioner's recommended budget? Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. Avon votes yes. Bellingham. Braintree. Aye. Brookline. Yes. Canton. Yes. Cohasset. Dedham. No. Dover. Foxborough. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Holbrook. Hold on. Sorry. Medfield. Medway. Millis. Milton. Needham. Yes. Norfolk. Norwood. Plainville. Yes. Quincy. Yes. Randolph. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Stoughton. Yes. Walpole. Wellesley. Westwood, Weymouth, Rentham. We have 64.67 yes and 3.43 no. Okay. The motion passes. The motion passes. Okay. Thank you very much for that. You really did a great job. Thank you. Um, so we don't need any more votes on the money no. pieces. Okay. So the last piece I did promise we would just discuss very briefly the IT. Um, I just want to remind people that uh, the reason uh, Director Cronin reports out to us on the IT is because we requested that he do that um, about how the process was going um, to make sure we're having IT that serves the county well. Um, and I think this, it's really the only thing I think on this issue is uh, the register, I promised you if you had something to say, we would hear you. Thank you. Uh, I'll keep it short. I know it's late. And luckily, the Red Sox aren't doing that well this year. So uh, really, uh, on the IT, I mean, the only reason I was going to uh, speak on the IT was, was, was just this. I, I just think, I don't think, my assessment is a, a sober one. I don't think it's been going as well as it could. Um, I've tried to keep that between uh, uh, Mr. Cronin and the commissioners, but uh, I, I did uh, send that out to the advisory board. I mean, we're talking uh, an organization, as I said, recorded over 200,000 documents, $81 million. And to me, we had an efficient IT department. And I just want to make sure the resources are there to keep uh, the demand of the customers, to keep what they need in place. But also, uh, we're in an era of cybersecurity risks and threats. 
and, and that's concerning to me. It's concerning because the FBI has indicated that uh, records could be targeted, uh, as well as, you know, I'm just concerned about the money. And, and that's one of the, the big things, because I, I, I sent you a letter uh, to the advisory board, and, and, and just, you know, where is the plan? You know, uh, you know, I expected, since we talked last spring, that there would be a more considered approach uh, to this uh, consolidated county IT uh, than I think has been in place. Um, I don't find it to be the most transparent process. I don't find that the registry has necessarily been included. But also, more importantly, is that uh, things were said. Uh, the, the county director said they'd have a CIO in place uh, by mid-July. And, and here we are. And, and I hope you understand the frustration. It's not directed at anyone in this room. But on June 30th, 2021, we had a registry CIO, we had an IT administrator, Dan Caparata, and we had a, a, a half-time person. That half-time person, as you heard from, uh, you know, went over to the county IT department. He's no longer there. The registry CIO or county CIO, that's not in place. Um, and, and to me, Dan Caparata is a one-armed paper hanger. He's doing work for the county and, and uh, trying to do work for the registry. So I just see some shortcomings in this, and I just want to, uh, you know, uh, you know, when the registry put it in the budget uh, last time, at Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Cronin, Director Cronin, I uh, took it out. We asked for a, uh, another uh, staff. And when the registry brought it up last spring, it was cut out by uh, Director Cronin. It was a bad idea. Now it's a good idea. I applaud it, but it shouldn't be whether the registry came up with the idea, therefore it was a bad idea. We, we need, IT is too important to not have it be vibrant. And, and uh, again, it's, don't go by me. A uh, Boston NBC investigative report showed one out of six communities here in Massachusetts have been hit by a ransomware attack. Axios in June of 2020, uh, 2022 said uh, Massachusetts companies and governmental agencies have seen a two-fold increase in data breaches over the last decades. Today, Massachusetts ranks 13th of any state in the country in terms of monies lost due to cyber attacks, according to the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center. Thanks. So I'm just saying we definitely need uh, resources. I, I uh, urge like more uh, collaboration. Uh, so that we can move forward on this process. And, and where, where are we? You know, um, there was someone, I didn't even know about the interview process. And you might say, well, that's none of your business. It's the county IT department. But I, I'd like to think we hired good CIOs. I'd like to think we had a good process when we replaced Chuck Phelan. I'd like to think we had a good process when uh, uh, Jim Limby retired and we got a person from Dell Computer who took this job for 130000 uh, who also worked for partners. And, uh, you know, if, 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 if that permanent position was accepted and you're consolidated, you would have had someone in place for 130000 doing the job that needs to get done. So Thank you, Register. I just, I just urge that, okay. that if we can right. kind of move forward right. and try to do what's best uh, for Thank the citizens of North County. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. Are there any, is there any further discussion about the IT consolidation and how it's going? Mr. Padilla, from Franklin. So I couldn't disagree more with uh, Ms. Register and Donald. It's been a significant work to try to get a CIO in place. I'm not sure where the information is coming from. It's been an incredibly considered approach. Um, it's been transparent. All, everyone knows what we're doing with this stuff. A lot of the facts that are coming out here don't have much to do with anything. But I do have one question for our, our director. Yes. So has there ever been a time when the register has been with a CIO or a person to deal with the, the things that the CIO would do in his office. Has there ever been any time over there that there's been a vacancy? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Padula, for your question. That was very helpful. Um, any other questions or comments about the IT consolidation? I always look to you, Mr. Phelan, because I know you're a real expert in this. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I'm going to I'm gonna remain quiet on the vice attorney. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's why I asked the question. Okay, all right. Thank you. I okay. I see a lot of things. But okay. Uh, all right. No, I just, I, I know you have a real expertise and background in this, as other people do. Mr. Ryan. Won't you approve the minutes of the August 7th? Second. Thank you, Charlie. Okay. That was the uh, the next item on the agenda. Do we have a all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed to the minutes? I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Charlie. Abstain from Carl. Okay. Okay. Yep. All righty. No other abstentions. Okay. Excellent. Um, and I think uh, 
Is there any other topics? Do you want to ask Charlie if he's got anything else on his mind? Anything else on your mind, Charlie? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Second. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Please no. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.